Today I'm starting off with Arsh Rough Press Paper. I'm using a 140 pound block. I'm mostly using my Isabee Squirrel Mop, num size number six. And I'm starting out with Nickel Azo Yellow. It is this gorgeous scene of a sunset over a lake. Just the sun is just barely gone down and there's these wonderful dark purple blue clouds from the storm that's coming up. So I'm when I took the pictures, I it was this absolutely fantastic scene, but I was rushing to get my four year old inside because we'd gone on a little bit of a hike and well, you know. <laughs> So it's just this amazing scene right before a summer storm. I'm using the Nickel Azo Yellow, and as you can tell, I'm mixing a lot of colors in this one, a lot of pigments in this one, and so I put my palette up for some of it so that you could see. It's a very simplified palette because it's dull, not too dramatic. Light, the light is dramatic, but the colors aren't so bright in the evening with the low long light and I'm using some cobalt violet, some ultramarine blue, some cobalt blue, nickel azo yellow, quinacridone rust, I think that's all. Um, and um, it, so it's a very subtle palette and I'm mixing these a little bit on the paper, a little bit on the palette and you can see the pulls as they mix together on um, my palette up there. So I'm leaving plenty of whites and light colors and just kind of a little bit uh, wet on dry, not really dry brush, but I'm laying some edges on the rough paper kind of scratch around. Now it's kind of tricky. Um, you don't want to have where the nickel azo yellow and the blues hit, you do not want green, or at least not too much green. There's a little bit of green as sunset, but not too much. Um, so th that's where the cobalt violet mixing comes in handy. It dulls it just enough and adds just that little touch of red, which makes it not so green. Some nice ultramarine blue. A little bit more ultramarine blue. Very simple palette. And something like this with the big dark clouds takes a lot more pigment than you would think. especially on rough press paper. Hot press paper would be a slicker effect, but you wouldn't get those wonderful edges from the storm clouds just wisping away at the edges. So this is ultramarine blue mixed with a bunch of cobalt violet. And I just want the little wispies there. And it's dried a bit so that I can have a little bit of wet on dry paper effect. This entire painting was relatively quick and it's something, it's the sort of thing that you could do in an evening if you feel like it. Though unfortunately I just can't paint on location for sunsets because there's not enough light on my paper plus the four-year-old effect. The trick is to write down the colors because your camera is not going to record those colors accurately. That was close, but, and of course I did a little bit of effects on it and um, tried to color correct it as much as possible right away. That's very important. Go ahead and adjust the colors as quickly as you can in your camera and on your computer because you cannot capture the colors of a sunset 
on your camera. It just isn't going to happen. That's what painting is for. They're very subtle colors and you can capture gorgeous, the idea of a gorgeous sunset. Absolutely, you can capture gorgeous sunsets, but you cannot capture those exact colors. So take notes, you know, scribble it in your phone or whatever, and adjust the color as soon as you can to as close as you can get, and then realize your memory is more accurate. More nickel azo yellow. And there's a bit of a tree line here where the trees break up at the edge of the lake, far edge of the lake. And I'm wanting to do, um, the light is coming from behind the trees. So there is a glow at the edge of the trees that's just wonderful. And that's a sort of subtle effect. So I thought at first, oh, well, Nicolazzo yellow would do it, but it wasn't bold and dark enough. So I switched to the quinacridone rust for the, the backlight effect. And then I want some of the same color in the clouds. And that looks really bright right now, but two washes from now, it won't. And also remember, everything goes on much darker than it dries to. So I'm wearing some very dark darks with those trees on the far edge. Remember, it's going to dry half that dark, if that. Break up the line with the horizontal storm clouds there. Quite a front coming in. It takes a lot of paint to get those dark clouds. So the clouds are primarily a mixture of ultramarine blue, uh, cobalt violet, and the quinacridone rust, and a few touches of the nickel azo yellow. And you can see just how gorgeous it is. So here's the tricky part, and you do want to wait until it has dried before you start scrabbling your brush over that, um, because you want the nice, the bright sunlight effect. You know, it's it's just a front. It's a, a summer storm. It will be over in a few minutes of heavy downpour, but you're wanting that light beyond the storm to glow through the clouds, you know. If we went to get really corny, we could put some shafts of light through or something, but I didn't see them this day, and I generally paint that sort of thing only when I see it. And then it's gorgeous. I want this a little bit subtler up there on the upper right. Even more darks here. Don't worry about the splatter. You're going to get some splatter on when you're using a mop brush, like the, anytime you're using a mop brush, you're going to get some splatter, some places you don't want. That's part of the fun of a mop brush. It goes everywhere and you know, you can always clean it up. That's not a big deal. Now oh, the clouds over on the right hand side, I'm wearing them softer less definition, a little less looming. And um, so I'm, I'm doing some softer edges there. The clouds on the left and the smaller clouds, I want them highly defined. I want your interest drawn to those edges. Now, this is pretty interesting. I'm using a little bit of cobalt teal and that's a very greeny blue, so it's going to be mixed with a little bit of cobalt blue and the cobalt violet and all that to dull it slightly. But there's that clear blue of a blue sky beyond there. And I just want that little bit. And then the clouds there are lit up on top of that. Little wispy clouds in the background there. Remember, they get smaller and flatter as they go further away. 
That is pretty much the one thing that can be sure of all clouds. Smaller, more horizontal, is there further. From there, it gets more interesting. Now I've been working on this a little bit more and I had let dry some so I can get those harsh edges that I want. So it really is a combination between the harsh scrappily edges and the ones that blur to nothing, the little wisps. And you can tell how much darker that has dried and I'm still adding some darks. I want some nice, rounded, interesting definition there against the, the pale light. That is my center of interest. So we're a little hesitant here, just barely touching it. And I really do prefer barely touching it with a big brush versus the very carefully drawing with a small brush. It's all a matter of taste and what you prefer, but I think you get a looser effect with the big brush, with the good point. Because you can do from tiny to big in the same stroke. It's more cobalt teal and cobalt violet kind of all mixed up. Still using the same few colors. I want that really dark back there. I want it to loom. Now here I had it, I want to frame my center of interest a little bit more, so I want more of a mid-tone, and I want a le little less definition. It was, uh, it had a bit too much contrast in the big bulk of that cloud. So remember, all of your brush strokes should bring attention to your center of interest. This really is a fussy stage of painting. There's many, many layers and I'm just going over and getting the effect that I want. With the whole painting, it still doesn't take that long to do. Still 30 minutes, 45 minutes, something like that. And that's all there is to it. It's, it's very focused attention. So I have more contrast and more going on in the left hand large cloud. And I want a little bit more definition in those, a little bit more contrast. So I'm hitting that with a one layer or two of the darker cloud colors. I have all these great warm pigments behind the clouds, so the cool colors are framing the warm colors and drawing your eye to that center of attention. You know it's going to be a brief summer shower and beautiful evening. Thank you so much for watching this with me and I hope it inspires you to paint a sunset near you. If you'd like more information, please visit my website at paintingwatercolor.com and please subscribe or give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Happy painting!